Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. I have a studio location in Forest City, North Carolina. I have a website called Off the Beaded Path Beadstore.com, and I've been here on YouTube for about the last 10 or 11 years. For today's video, you'll want to make sure to go to Off the Beaded Path Beadstore.com and grab the free pattern for the fun floral needle case cover. Now, this specific cover I designed for International Beading Week, which was the end of July, and this has been a freebie on there, but I knew I was going to get some questions about the project and basics on how to do it. So, I've already done a video on a needle case before, and I'm going to link it right below here in the show description so you can see that there. But I wanted to go over, especially this one, since it's a freebie pattern on the website, I wanted to go over it to kind of teach you about the pattern and how to read the pattern and how to work the pattern on the needle case. So, you'll definitely see you are going to need quite a few colors of size 11 Delica beads. The colors and the quantities you need will be on that free pattern. And again, I'm going to list it down below. You're also going to need your favorite needle, your favorite beading thread, and some size 15 seed beads. I believe that one is a 10 millimeter cabochon for the top. I can't remember. I'll double check it and let you know for sure. And then you're going to need the needle case. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the needle case. So there's two types of needle cases, these wooden cases that you can use. The first, which I have made my pattern by, which will make this needle case here, is called a non-flush case. This means that the top is not 100% flush with the tube itself. So you can see you have the tube and then it comes up a little bit, all right? This is a non-flush tube, and this is what I'm going to be using today. The other one is called a flush tube. The flush tube is one that the top is completely flush with this, so there's no expansion for the top. So, to make this work right, you'll want to make sure that you use the non-flush, which again can be found on my website, and I'll put a link below in the box. You'll want to lay out your beads. I already have my beads kind of laid out here that I'm going to use today. I'm using some different colors than what I used on the pattern, so my beads will be listed below that I have used just because I want to make a different color. But you can see here, you have six colors of flowers, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You have your background color. You have the color that goes around the flower, so the flower outline, that's black. Uh, and then you have this kind of silver lined opal color. That's the flower as well. So the only thing that I changed in the actual pattern was the outline here. This is color B. We changed this to 010, which is black. In the pattern, it is 2144. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and get your needle threaded with a comfortable amount of thread and we'll get started. For the pattern today, I'm going to be using the .006 in the dragon thread and I'm starting out with two yards. You can use whatever kind of thread you want, but this is what I'm going to be using. When you grab up your pattern, you will notice here that you have your bead chart. All right, so if you want to start out on your bead chart, you start at the top and you are going to start here and you would pick up all the beads going in a zigzag all the way across till you get back to here. Now, you'll notice that there are some little squares highlighted on each bead as you go down. This lets you know that this project is tubular peyote. All right, so tubular peyote, all this means is that I'm gonna work this in a tube instead of working it flat. And each of the beads that are highlighted are gonna be my little uh, bead that I'm gonna be adding in the first row. And that is also my step up bead as I go through. So that is why you have these little diagonal lines and that is because that's first bead step up. I like to go by the word chart itself. The word chart is on page four here, and the word chart is going to start at the top of our piece. Just like I was showing you, you know, you'd start here and work across. It's the same thing. We are going to be starting our word chart at the top, and we're going to be working down the piece. 
the number in the parentheses is the amount of beads that you're gonna pick up of a specific color. It says row one and two because you are going to use these 36 beads to build the first two rows. Once you start your tubular peyote, it's gonna be on row three is what they call it, which honestly, it's just kinda like our row two. But the great thing about this is once you pick up your beads, you don't have to worry about where do you come through or if you go through all of them again because it's the same color for two rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get 36 of my A beads picked up. So once you have your first row of beads threaded, which is 36A, then I'm ready to actually put it onto the tube itself and start working. Now here's the very, 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 very important part about this project. If you look here, you will see L, okay? This means we're always gonna be working to the left. If you do not do it in this pattern, and it wasn't a symmetrical pattern like we're doing here, this would make everything backwards. And so if it had words on it or anything like that, it would be completely backwards and you would get very frustrated. So all this simply means for my right-handed friends, okay, I'm gonna get, tell my right-handed and my left-handed friends. So if I am right-handed, I'm gonna take, and I can either tie this together or I can come back through a few beads. I'm just gonna go through a few beads here. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter how many you go through. I don't go through them all again because I'm gonna, um, well, you can go through them all again, I guess, if you want to. This is gonna be the, the very tip top here. We're gonna be adding some 15, so it's completely up to you kind of how you want to do that. But when we start stitching, if I am a right-handed beater, okay, take the top off. I'm going to put this onto my little tube, all right? My tail thread, my short tail thread is away from me, all right? So it's going away from my body. My working thread is coming towards my body. And what I'm gonna do is as I work, I'm gonna be picking up a bead and I'm gonna be working towards myself. All right, my beadwork is gonna start here and it's gonna end at the tube. So again, if I am right-handed and I slide this on my tube, my tail thread is away from me, my working thread is towards me, and I'm gonna be working from the top of the tube to the bottom of the tube. If you're one of my left-handed friends, okay, I'm gonna flip it around the tail thread is gonna be coming towards yourself. The working thread is gonna be coming away from yourself like this. And what you're gonna do is at this point, you are always gonna be picking up and stitching away from your body. And again, your bead work will start here and it will work to the bottom of your tube. All right, so again, left-handed friends, when you get it on the tube, the tail thread is coming towards you the working thread is coming away from you and you will be stitching always away from yourself. Now, once you get it started, it doesn't matter how you stitch it, um, but you have to get it started in the correct manner or it's gonna be backwards. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm actually, I'm gonna go through all these beads again and just to tighten it up on my tube a little bit, and then I'm gonna tie the tail and the working thread together. So you can see I've gone all the way around, I've went through, I tied it together, and then I've come through just a few beads here. And so that was my row one and two. So row three tells me I'm gonna add 18A. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna add them all at one time, I'm just going to simply pick up one bead, and for where I'm coming out, I'm going to come out of a bead skip a bead, and then I'm going to go through a bead. Get it through there, there we go. Okay, so again, I came out of a bead, I skipped the bead, and I go through a bead. So that when I pull this, I want the new bead to sit just like this, and so that my bead work will start running down in this direction. So again, I'm going to pick up a bead, I'm coming out of a bead, I'm going to skip a bead, and then I will go through a bead, just like this, so that it will start building 
my work. So I pick up a bead, I skip a bead, and I go through a bead. So again, the great thing about this pattern is the first two rows are the same color. So you don't have to worry too much. But I'm going to continue in this way, putting in my Delica beads. So when you get all the way around, this is what your piece should look like. Now I'm fixing to add the last bead for my row. So you'll notice here, I am coming out of this bead. I'm going to skip this bead and go through this bead. Don't make the mistake of jumping up and coming through one of these beads up here. You have to finish the row, so I have to go through this last bead of my row. And then, once I've done that, I can do the step up. And the step up is simply taking my needle and going through the first bead of the row that I just added. So now I have rows one through three complete on my piece. So if you look now, row four is where we're gonna start putting in some other colors. So again, right here where it says 2A, that just does not mean I'm gonna pick up 2A at one time. This means I'm gonna pick up an A, work a stitch, pick up an A and work a stitch, okay? So I'm going to follow my pattern to work this row. So my pattern is 2A, and you can lay this out if you want to. So 2A, a B, then 2A, a B, five A, one B, two A, and I'm, I'm going off camera here, but I promise you I'm, I'm putting it on here, one B and three A. Now, once I lay my beads out, do not make the mistake of starting back here where you finished, all right, on your layout. You need to start right here and pick the beads up one at a time, just like you have them laid out. So this is a great way for people who don't understand the step up really great or who have an issue with multiple colors, like picking up different things. So this row is great because all we're gonna do is pick up a bead and come through the next bead sticking up. And if you have a hard time, I, I'm doing these colors because I want something completely different for this needle case. So if you have a hard time seeing these colors, just make sure to jump in um, to the video that I've done previous to this. Again, you can find it below in the description box and you can see brighter colors on that one. The biggest thing is just starting it correctly. Once you start it correctly, you're just doing peyote stitch. So it's just picking up a bead and going through the next bead and following your pattern until you get to the bottom. So this is really nice because you can just kind of fly through at this point if you lay your beads out. You don't have to go back and look at the pattern unless it looks funky. Just make sure to watch and not get your thread caught because you can see there I got the thread caught. You don't want to get your thread caught because then you're going to get around and go, oh man, and have to take it out. So I'm gonna continue with my row and I will be right back. So you can see here, I have one bead left and I'm back to that, that step up point. So what I have to do is I skip a bead and go through a bead. So it's I'm going through this lower bead first. That will finish out my row. And then I can do the step up. So I can actually go through these two beads at once to finish up the row. So I'll go ahead and I'll pull this through just like this, and then, see, there we go, and then I will continue to work all the way through my pattern here until you've gone all the way around. So I believe there are 85 rows. So you're gonna continue until, let's see, am I missing a page? Five or six, six, no, uh, 96 rows. You've got 96 rows to do. And then we will um, do the bottom and learn how to finish out the rest of the piece. Once you get your base done, this is what your piece should look like. 
Now I've gone ahead and I have finished off my thread here on the end. So that way I can go ahead and start the bottom. The bottom is gonna be worked on a separate piece of thread. So you'll want to thread your needle with a new piece of thread. And I'm gonna do mine in multiple colors just so it's easier for you to see. You'll want to do this in one color. So I'm gonna thread on six of my beads here. And with those six beads, I'm gonna grab a hold and then I'm going to come back through all those beads again. And then I'm gonna go through one more bead so that it will make my little circle here that I need. I'm going to thread on 111 O. Okay, and let me see where my thread is here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna thread on one bead and I'm gonna go through the very next bead. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. So I pick up a bead and I'm not skipping anything. I'm just going through the very next bead. Pick up one, go through the next one. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. So we're gonna be putting in six beads. So when you put in the last bead, we go through the last bead of the row, and then we step up through the first bead we added in the row, which is gonna be this one right here. So now, we are gonna thread on two beads and go through the next bead. So two, and then I come through the next one sticking up. And I'm doing this all the way around, picking up two and going through my next bead. And you can see there kind of what's happening. We're just adding in some new layers. So I pick up the last two and I have to go through the single bead first here. So the single bead of my last previous row. And then I step up by going through the first bead in this round. So I'm only going through the first bead of that set of two. So when I get this step, this is what my piece is going to look like. So at this point, I'm going to pick up an 11 and I'm gonna go through the very next bead. So I'm not skipping anything. I'm just going through that next bead of that set of two. So it's gonna make a little point. Then I pick up one bead and I come through the first bead of the next set of two. And I will work this all the way around. So it just kind of pops into place there. So you pick up one and go through the very next bead. And then you pick up one. And you go through the first bead of the next set of two. So I'm going to work around popping my beads in place. So I only have one bead left to add for my row to finish it up. So all I have to do is pick up my one bead I go through the first bead of that first set of two where I started there, and then I step up by going through the first bead of my new row, so that that now completes that row. 
So now that I've done my step up, I'm going to work a new row and I'm going to put one 11 0 in between each bead sticking up. So I'm technically working a row of peyote now, just like this. And then I'm just going to continue to add one bead in between each bead sticking up, just like you see here. When you finish the row, you step up by going through the first bead you added, which was this first black bead here. Now, we are gonna do one more row, and this row is gonna be a little bit different because the first time that you pick up, you're gonna pick up two 11s, and you're gonna go through the very next bead. The next time, you're only gonna pick up one 11 and go through. So, two, one, two and one, just like you see here. So two, one. And I'm gonna work all the way around, putting in my beads, just like you see here. And then when I get done, I'm going to step up through the first bead here of this first set of two. So now you have your completed bottom to our needle case, and then you have the completed body. And this is where we're gonna put the bottom to the body. Now remember, like I said, yours will be a single color. I have the multiple colors just so it was a little easier to see this on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the bottom here over the wooden case and then i'm gonna see if i can zoom in here just a little bit so give me just a second ha there we go okay so if i kind of hold this back from the bottom what i want to do is i want to pick any one of these beads that are sticking up to start and i'm going to take my needle and i'm going to go through one of those single beads now, I'm not gonna pull this tight yet because I want you to see what we do then. So once I got that one single bead in, then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna go through the second bead here of that set of two. And when I pull that, it pulls up next to that bead. Now, I'm gonna pull this back a little bit more so you can see again. So the next one that I do is I take and I come through the next bead that's sticking up here on the body of the piece. Okay, so, so far, this is what I've got. I'm gonna keep it back just so you can see a little bit better. So now I'm gonna take, and just like we zip up in peyote, I'm gonna zip up. So now I'm gonna come through the next bead sticking up here on the bottom, which is gonna be this bead here. And so when I pull this tight, tight down, you can't tell where I started and where I stopped here between the body and the base. So now I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so you can see. So now all I do is I come through the next bead sticking up here on the body, which is this bead here. And then I come through the first bead of the set of two here. Each time you come through a set of two, you are gonna treat those two beads almost like they're a single bead. So now I go through the next bead sticking up here on the base, which is gonna be this bead here. And then I go through the second bead there of that set of two. And then I will continue to zip the bottom and the top together just like that until I have it completely connected. Once you get that bottom connected, then you are ready to finish out your piece by doing the top. So with the top, I honestly tell you, don't even look at the pattern if you have the pattern. Um, the 
easiest thing to do is to start out with 40 size 11 delicates. You can use whatever color you want. I'm going to use black, and then I think I may do, throw some pink in there as well, just to kind of throw something. But we're going to take and go through all of those beads again. And then you are going to work peyote until you get to the top of the little thing itself. So you can actually take this off if you want to and just work straight off of this so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting your thread caught on this. But you are going to fill this up with peyote until you reach the top right here. And then we are going to finish it off. So once you have stitched to a certain point, then you're going to want a 14 millimeter flat back cabochon. It needs to be completely flat on the back so that we can glue it onto the top. Now you do not have to glue it, but I like to use just a bit of um, either some E6000 glue or just a little bit of this Loctite glue just to hold it in place as I continue to stitch. So that way I never have to worry about it popping off. So I'm just going to continue to add maybe one or two more rows of my size 11 Delica beads. And then I'm gonna switch over and do two rows with the 15s. So once you have your two rows of 15s on top, technically you're done. I wanted to bring a splash of the gold here to the bottom though. So I stitched to the bottom and I put a row of my 15 golds there on the bottom so that when I close it now, you can see it kind of brings the gold in from here to here. And I love how this new color scheme turned out. You can tell how completely different they look depending on the colors that you use. So I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make the new needle case. So friends, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this new needle case. The pattern again is completely for free on how to do this part on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And I do have a completely full pattern that teaches you about the top, the bottom, the whole nine yards, again, on my website. So if you click on the link below in the description box, it will take you directly to that video. And it will also take you to the pattern if you would like to purchase the full pattern or grab this one for free. And again, down below, um, I'm going to link the colors or show the colors that I used in this one. The colors that are in here are the actual colors that are in the pattern. The other thing I need to let you know as well, um, the person who tested this for me did not realize that there was a mistake in the pattern, and I didn't until I started um, making this one, and I realized that there was um, a mistake, an extra bead um, at the bottom of each of the flowers on the original one. So I've gone in and I've corrected the pattern. So if you had previously already downloaded this pattern during International Beading Week, just delete it off your computer and go in again into your account on our website and you can um, download it again and it'll have those corrections made for you. Um, I'll also put the link down for the non-flush wooden cases here. And again, all of that's on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. So thanks so much. And <laughs> thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.